So today I uh, woke up and I said, you know what? I'm going to do something I've never done before. I try to always give you guys uh, content that really matters, despite the fact that, you know, um, I'm not the biggest YouTuber, although I feel like, you know, we should be bigger than what we are based on what's out there. But, you know, you can't control that. So all I can do is uh, give you guys uh, content and just hope that over time, you know, enough people uh, will see this. So um, and, and, and what do I mean by that real quick? Why, why do I care that people see it? Because I'm trying to be some big YouTuber. No, no, I really I really don't. In, in, in fact, if I spent more time and effort and, you know, into production and everything, I could make this channel bigger. That's not what this is about. What I truly want to do is reach more people because I, I care about people. Right. And I specifically care about people's financial situation. Why? Why do I care? Because. I went through a devastating, you know, what was for me really devastating situation at a very young age. And it was devastating at the time, but it was it was the biggest blessing that God could have ever gave me. And that was, you know. Uh, I, I grew up poor, always had an, an idea to make a lot of money, even though nobody else in my family had ever done that. Um, I, you know, I, I can just remember always wanting things to be better. And I always wanted to change the world, always. And I found out why that was years later, why I was so different from the rest of uh, my family. Uh, I won't get into that now, uh, but but there's there was a reason for that. Right. So I've always been focused on that. So. So, you know, uh, when I got out of high school, I had an unfortunate situation happen to me uh, while I was in college. And I, I turned that into a blessing as well. And long story short, by the time that I was 20 years old, even though I hadn't finished uh, college, um, I was making 20,000 a month at 20, right? So, you know, going from, you know, 16, 17 years old, not having, you know, anything to just three years later, um, you know, making more money than not just you had made, but more money than anybody in your family had ever made in, you know, in their life. Right. That was was crazy. Um, you know, so but I've and I've shared this story before and I'll, I'll be brief with it. Long story short. Uh, people were jealous of my success. Right. And just, you know, for those of you who don't know. Uh, yes, I am a black man and the things that you see on YouTube, I thank God for social media. <laughs> I really do. Uh, I thank God for iPhones and, and stuff because people, the things that you see on social media are real. They happen. They have happened to me multiple times. I have had multiple run-ins with the police for th things I had nothing to do with, wasn't even there, wasn't around. And literally, if not for the testimony of a police officer, a police officer who, who was a rookie on the force, so, you know, they hadn't got to him yet. But if he had a lied on stage, I could have spent time in jail for literally not joking, uh, being inside my car while parked on the grass with a hundred other cars at a park. That's the, literally, I'm in the car, just chilling in the car at the park. 
with hundreds of other cars. We weren't together, but I, I just happened to park my car there and I'm inside the car and a cop shows up, knocks on my window and says, I fit the description of someone who had done some uh, carjackings and armed robberies in the area. And the description uh, was like six one or six two. I'm 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 five nine. <laughs> so it wasn't me, bro. And even this cop's uh, partner, his partner was like, "Come on, man, let's go." That's not him. His partner, but that didn't stop this cop from wrapping me up in chains i'm not joking wrapping me up in chains from my feet to my chest and put me in the back of a police car like a fish like i couldn't even i couldn't sit up for all the chains they laid me in the back of a police car like I was some kind of prized animal, right? S something that they had captured in the wild. Right? I won't I won't I won't get into to that more than I already have. I could have I if not for another cop, a good cop telling the truth, I could have went to jail. Right. And so and that's just one of literally I would like to tell you that's the worst story. It's not. <laughs> it's not. I've had four running. So anyway, long story short, the, the things you see, they do happen. So, you know, I and I didn't know this at the time, but at my job, there were people. People. Who were jealous of my success. Even though some of these people were actually making money off me. Like some of my managers, if I do well, they do well. And in this particular instance, this store was a bad store before I got there. This store was not doing well before I got there. So literally, I'm not joking, single handedly. I changed the trajectory of this uh, music store, this one location. By, it, it was part of a chain, Guitar Center, just so you know. It was part of a chain, but this was like one of the, the second to the last worst store in the entire chain. And it was in a not so great kind of hidden location, which is part of why it wasn't doing so well right but anyway so that's what so i got fired again for for nothing i'm i'm making the store uh millions of dollars millions of dollars every single month and uh ultimately what i got fired over cost eight dollars eight dollars i got fired over a missing screw I'm not not joking. A missing screw that was part of a twelve thousand uh, dollar deal that I had just done. Okay, and there was a screw missing that cost eight dollars. Basically, what happened was I closed this deal around eight fifty nine, and the store closes at nine, right? And so this particular guy, I knew him. And so what I did, he asked me to, he bought a bunch of stuff for his church. And he was like, look, you know, I don't know anything about this stuff. Will you put this together for me? And so um, I didn't want to make the drive to the church and all that. So I put it together for him, his whole rig in the store. So all he had to do was take his equipment 
and will it out, right? And so he could go and, you know, do what he wanted to do. And when he started his services, all he had to do was will this thing out. So because I closed the deal at 859, obviously the registers closed and I'm still in the store like around 930, right? You have to shut down and everything else. So I'm, I'm not even on the clock. I'm working for free, but I'm doing this because I know this guy, right? And during the time that I'm putting this together, uh, he needs one screw. We bought a bunch of screws, but I miscalculated by one. <laughs> you should have seen all the stuff he bought. I miscalculated by one. So I say to my manager who's standing there, say, hey, do you see this? I'm getting a screw. Okay, is that okay? I we're missing a screw. Remind me tomorrow to add this screw to the bill. He said, of course, no problem. Okay. I grabbed the screw, I put it on. Right? Of course, I come in the next day. Nobody's thinking about a screw. I certainly wasn't. Management wasn't. Because again, I'm here to make a killing. I'm here to make money. Who's thinking about a screw? Well, five months later, after this event, this is how you know is is bull. They didn't fire me the next day or two days. Five months after I forgot to put the screw on the ticket. I forgot to uh, the ma management didn't remind me to put it on the ticket. Five months later, I was fired. But really, the reason why I was fired is because I was about to move into a luxury apartment that just happened to be the same apartment complex where the general manager was staying. That's why I got fired. I brought in the application one day. I said, hey. General manager, I need you to sign off on this. He says, okay, no problem. Where are you moving to? And he sees the apartment complex and he stops everything that he's doing and leans back in his chair and says, oh, this is where I live. And as a naive 20 year old, I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. I said, we'll be next to each other. M maybe I can come over your apartment and borrow some sugar. Is literally what I said, <laughs> you know, in a laughing way. Right. This is somebody that I consider to be my friend. The very next day I was fired. Right. I was depressed. Who wouldn't be? 20 years old, I'm making 20,000 a month, I'm on top of the world. And so what I learned is, or, or this was the beginning of understanding that, hey, if you don't own it, you don't have it. You can have a job, this, this, and that, so on and so forth. A job can be taken away from you. It doesn't matter how much you make. And this happened at the $20,000 level a month. I want you all to understand that this happens at the million dollar level as well. You'll see certain people, certain folks in the news will have million dollar jobs. And if the organization wants you out they will just take you out and they can conjure up whatever they want to get you out. It doesn't matter who you are. Right. So that led me over a long time. Right. Because it took me a long time to get here. That led me to crypto. And the reason why crypto stood out is is because Literally for the for the first time, I could own my own money because I had figured out that 
everything else that I was doing, even if I was making money, stuff can still be taken away from you. Right? Like I was trading uh Forex. And, you know, me being me, I was doing well at that. I've always done well at everything I've ever done. Okay? That's just how the, the type of mind that God has blessed me with. But um, I saw something happen to somebody else. And basically, arbitrarily, their account was shut down. And this had happened to me as well, but not in this way. Not financially. Uh, I was part of a, uh, uh, um, you know, I had a social media account. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to keep defending these folk. I had a stock twits account. <laughs> I was one of the first people to have a stock twits account. And so I had grown a large following on this stock twits account. And because of that, the things that I was involved with at that time, mainly uh, Forex and teaching people how to trade uh, Forex and options and things like that. Because I had followers, naturally, people would uh, click on my website from stock twits. And, you know, I was getting, you know, maybe 20 to 30 people, maybe 10 people, 15 people. You know, it fluctuates every month that wanted me to teach them because, again, I was posting what I was doing. Long story short, stock twits shut down my account and I just want to say since then <laughs> since then I've had multiple accounts on multiple platforms shut down it's like it's something so crazy it's like when you're trying to do the right thing it's like the world comes against you you're trying to do the right thing I'm not trying to be sleazy I'm not you know, uh, pumping it down. I'm not doing, I'm legit. Like, what am I doing right now? I'm about to give you step by step how I became a millionaire. I've never done this before. You're not paying me for this. Right? If I set this up in a conference room or something like that and marketed it, like, I could do that. All the stuff that you see on YouTube, I could do that and say, hey, for this amount of money, I'm going to teach you step by step how I became me. Do you, do you think I wouldn't make some money doing that? Do you think people who are struggling right now wouldn't want to know how I did that? Of course they would. I'm not doing that. But it's like the more when you try to do good, the world, which is wicked, tries to come against you. Right. So anyway, enough of that. So long story short, I. Uh, it was actually because of stock twits. That's why that was necessary for me to say. It was because of them that I discovered Bitcoin. I first heard of Bitcoin when it was $100. That's the first time that I ever saw something on stock twits about Bitcoin. It was 100 bucks. I'm like, eh, what is this? I didn't look it up. I didn't do any research. I'm just telling you. I saw it. The next time I saw, um, uh, uh, you know, that I uh, saw something about Bitcoin, it was $300. Okay. So I want to go back here and see if I can find maybe it was June or July or something that I saw um, Bitcoin the first time. And, and then it was. Let's go here. You see this is happening kind of quickly. Man, this is really fast. So it was de it definitely would have been in November because that's when I got in where I saw it at 300. Okay? Right? So there you go. At that time, I did a bit of research and I decided I was going to buy Bitcoin. OK, and I uh, set up my account by the time I got approved for the account, which is 
part of the part of uh, part of the problem with crypto at that time and still a little bit today. By the time I was able to buy it, you know, you got to go through an approval process. All that uh, Bitcoin was a thousand dollars. So I lost. Three hundred percent just waiting on an account to sign up with to get approval. So just think about that. Right. So that so there you go. Okay, there's a thousand dollars right there. Right. Okay. And I'm not gonna tell you how much I invested because you can do the math. At the end of the day, it's not gonna matter. All right. So I bought Bitcoin at a thousand dollars and what happened? It dropped <laughs> almost immediately after I bought it. Okay. So, so what did I do? Nothing. I stayed patient. In fact, just being truthfully honest with you, I mentally, I obviously I didn't forget about it, but in my head, that was my mentality. I'm just going to sit on it. I forgot about it. And I'm just going to let it sit there. And so that's what it did for years. And at this time, I didn't realize it. I was making the biggest mistake of my life, right? Um, which I, I'll share later, but I'm just holding, holding, holding. And when you know it, it popped. And you see here, 16,000, right? I'm, okay, so again, you can do the numbers. Um, uh, I, I did not sell all of it. I sold some of it. And then when it went down to 3,800, I bought a bunch of it. Okay, why? Because during this time is when I really started researching, right? And I'm like, okay, this is this is something real. Like this is for real, for real. Okay. And so when it hit 3,800, I bought a bunch. And then you can see what has happened since then. And all I have been doing since then, since then, is buying more. Okay. So I, I, I every major dip, I bought more. Okay, when it dipped down to 15,000 recently, I bought more. Okay, so that was like the first one, right? But still have that, it's still buying more. Okay, all right. Um, the next one, because I started doing research, I started to understand, okay, like, okay, where this is going. Okay. Uh, so that led me to what is now called Ave. But when I was in it, it wasn't called Ave. It was called something else. Ave didn't even exist. Right. And so I got in. Th the price that I got in is not even on here because it was less than a penny. <laughs> in fact, um, I should have kept it, but I needed some space. I am the first person on YouTube to ever do a video on Ave. I was the first one. Okay. So that, that, that's called a clue, right? So again, same thing. I bought it. Why did I buy Ave? Why did I buy Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin introduced something new to the crypto market, which was itself, which was sovereign money, your own money that cannot be controlled by the bank or anybody else. The centralization, uh, you know, cross border payments. See, I understood all this stuff because I was in stocks. So I came with some kind of education. And I, I think it's true, like when you come with some type of education from stocks or options or whatever, and you you find crypto, it's like it's easy. It's like, oh, OK, when you don't have the education, you will come in and, and, you know, 
you'll get into crypto and as soon as it go up a little bit, um, you'll sell. Right? Most people don't understand valuations. Right? And so the reason why you guys are saying, hey, you know, and I really appreciate it. Hey, man, you're bringing value that these other YouTubers don't bring. You're sharing, you're sharing stuff that, that they don't talk about. You know why? Because they don't have my background. And they didn't study like me. So the reason why I'm able to give you something is because I know things that they don't know. And I'm able to look at cryptos objectively based on uh, stocks. Because stocks is a lot harder than crypto, way harder than crypto. Crypto is easier and you can make more money, which is why I started doing it, right? So Ave introduced uh, basically uh, financial uh, transactions to crypto, meaning, you know, crypto used to just be trading crypto back and forth. Hey, you know, maybe I'll buy something with Bitcoin, something like that. But in terms of like savings accounts, interest, um, you know, things like that, that hadn't be, been created yet. Lending and borrowing and things like that. Ave was the first to do that. And so obviously I'm like, OK, this is going to be big. So I bought Ave less than a penny and what did i do after that just like bitcoin i did nothing i sat back i did do a youtube video because i wanted people to understand it right and so basically what this was ave is the end of all credit scores in the world basically <laughs> So think about what do I mean by that? Okay, like if 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 you know what you're doing and most people still don't, you can borrow money using your crypto and not have to rely on a credit score or anything like that. Yeah. So I I, I you know, I knew that was going to be big. Even though they weren't doing that initially, I knew uh where they were going. Right. So and you can see, like I said, less than a penny. You can see what happened after that. But this this isn't the end. Let me go here. OK. Now. What they were before. What they actually did was called a reverse split. So what that means is all the tokens they had. They divided them by one. I'm, I'm sorry. They divided them by 100. So when you see a penny back here, that was actually the equivalent of a dollar. Okay. So if it was a penny here, it was actually a dollar. Like I said, I got it for less than a penny. So when you see $70, $60 here, Right. That's the X. So a penny is a dollar. So, you know, to right now, that would be a 60 X. But I sold before then. Right. And, it, and I got it for less than a penny. So this was more than 100 X. OK. All right. Next. You can you could do the numbers. It does, like I said, it doesn't matter what you start with. If you keep hitting on, you know, 100 X's. Right. And this is for, you know, a lot of people that come on my channel hating. Oh, anybody could do this. Anybody could have bought this. Oh, that, no. Any, if, if that was the case, then more people would have my story and they don't. Right. I bought Chainlink at, I, I don't even know if my price is on here, 17 cents. Why did I buy Chainlink? I bought Chainlink because, again, they were introducing something new to crypto. Right? 
And it's kind of complicated to understand Chainlink. I won't go into it, but it was something very new and something very necessary. In fact, in order for Ave to be Ave all the way, in order to be what they are now, they needed Chainlink. And so that's why I bought them. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this literally cannot happen uh, without chain link so i need to get some chain link so i bought chain link at 17 cents and i sold it at 19 dollars in fact i believe on this day i believe i had the high price of the day and here i am i was thinking as you see it go down i was thinking that i nailed it i'm like yep nailed it i'm the man I got like the top price and look what happened. <laughs> it went to 50 some. It was higher than this, but now it's come down since then. So still more than a hundred X. That's another hundred X, but just waiting a little bit longer. It could have been like a 300 X, but you know, hundred X not going to complain. Right. Um, you know, and so that's why I got in that. Again, you can do the numbers. You can. It, it don't matter what you start with, baby. You keep getting hundred X's. It don't matter. You can start with a hundred dollars, right? Um, after this, okay. Just showing y'all the big stuff. There were some other things, but. We want the big hitters. Same thing. Wow. Price is not even on here. Um, got into this. Um, initially, I did get in at a dollar. But uh, this also fell to 17 cents. And so I bought a bunch more then. Right. And. This was like the best thing because <laughs> it was paying you interest along with going up. And you see how how high uh, it went up to 40 bucks. OK. And so. Um, thinking long term, I'm like, OK, you know, this might come back a little bit, but they were paying so much interest. I'm going to keep it. And. Um, Long story short, you know, making a bunch of money on this, but uh, they started doing some things and started messing up, whatever. But I still had made uh, a ton of money, uh, you know, on this, obviously, from 17 cents to uh, $40, which, again, I didn't sell any uh, up here. Um, I started to sell a little bit here around $14 and didn't really sell everything to like around seven or eight dollars um but you know still tremendous because again like i'm not going to even tell you what i was making every day because you're not going to believe me <laughs> you just won't believe me so um like this was this was incredible um you know what i mean and other people were able to take advantage of this as well Unfortunately, like I said, they've done a lot of things wrong. Um, I do not recommend this now under any circumstances. So, you know, I don't want you guys to think, oh, it might come back. Uh, you know, I there are better things. Let's just put it like that. But again, and, and why did I get into Pancake Swap? Because again, they introduced. Uh, decentralized exchanges to Binance Smart Chain. Uniswap had been introduced on Ethereum. And I, I want to show you that real quick, right? To show you the different, like, like how you can be in the same thing. Okay, the thing about Uniswap is when it came out, they had already gave a bunch of tokens to uh venture capitalists and all of that 
and influencers and other things. And so when it came out, it did go up. But the valuation was so high, I'm like, no, don't touch that. Uh, and, of course, it went down. Now, it was still a 10X. But what Pancake Swap did, right, and, I, and I'm just going to say this right now because, hey, let's get it all out the way. Uh, number one, things on uh, Binance Smart Chain are um, – the, the transactions are cheaper, right? Like way cheaper, like pennies, whereas Ethereum, you know, you can pay. I paid $100 for a failed transaction before, right? Um, or $50 or $20. You know, right now, uh, it might only be like $10, but that's because fewer and fewer people are using Ethereum. If a bunch of people, for whatever reason, e even on a given day, start using Ethereum a lot that day, your transactions are going to be, you know, your fees are going to be astronomical. However, for whatever reason, people pay more attention to things that are on Ethereum than Binance Smart Chain. And I'm just going to keep it real with you. A lot of that has to do with racism. There's no sugarcoating it. CZ has is is literally holding up the entire crypto market like seriously of all the exchanges out there this dude has been the most responsible <laughs> out of anybody like if he did anything wrong at this point they would have known and it would have if he pulled a Sam Bankman free they would have threw him under the jail right but because he's Chinese and because people see him as Chinese or whatever, even though he didn't grow up in China, right? People hate. And the reason why I know this is true. Oh, well, how can you, how do you know that? How can you say that? Because I witnessed the same thing in stocks. See, again, you can only talk about what you know. I would analyze stocks, right? And I would analyze American companies or European companies. And then I would analyze Chinese companies. And what I noticed was the even though the fundamentals of the Chinese companies were better, the valuations were always lower. And I'm like, why is why would you want to buy a, a company with poor fundamentals and high valuation when here's companies with good fundamentals there's growth there's everything else but they don't have the same valuation so i did the same thing there i invested in fundamentals i invested in those chinese companies when others weren't paying attention and the reason why the valuation was lower was simply because they were chinese it's just like that in stocks i'm, I'm sorry it's just like that in crypto excuse me you have people that have their beliefs or, you know, what, whatever. Oh, I don't want to deal with those Chinese or whatever. Right. And we're just talking about business. We're not talking about anything else. Human rights violation. All. OK, like you want to talk about that? That's another subject. We man, we just here to make money. We just hear about business. The bottom line is. Um, you can you can get better deals on BNB chain because less people are paying attention. And, and, and that couldn't be more exemplified by the fact that I shouldn't have been able to get pancake swap for 17 cents. The reason why I was able to get it so cheap is because people weren't paying attention. They were paying more attention to Uniswap. And they looked at pancake swap and, oh, this is just a copy. It wasn't a, a, a just a copy. They ended up doing and still do today more transactions than Uniswap. Still. Right. It's just unfortunate that the team, in fact, the team has changed. So the people who were running Pancake Swap back here are no longer here, which is also part of the problem. But I'm just letting you know the decisions that I made, why I was able to get in, so on and so forth. All of that. If this was on Ethereum, I never would have had that opportunity because it's going to come out with more hype. 
right? So again, you want to find things. It's, it's, it's very difficult to do, but when you find it, it's like, yo, find things that are introducing something new. They introduce DEX trading to a lot more people. Okay, because why the cheap the, the fees were cheaper. It, there were a lot of people that had like a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars that wanted to get in uh, DeFi, right? Literally with Ethereum, it's not impossible. But if you have a fifty dollar transaction, that's ten percent of your funds, and that's both ways. So it's going to be fifty dollars in, fifty dollars out, fifty dollars back to. Uh, the exchange or whatever, like you can spend two hundred dollars in fees on five hundred dollars, and then you get into some crap coin and it doesn't go up. You can lose all your money. Whereas Binance Smart Chain, the fees are like ten cents, five cents, fifteen cents. So that's why it grew so fast. So yes, I bought it initially at a dollar. I was getting free cake every single day, just for free. And then at one point it fell to 17 cents and I'm like, there go my number and bought more and the rest is history. Okay. Again, do it doesn't matter how much money you start with. You hit on multiple hundred X's is going to be millions of dollars. That is the beauty of crypto. Okay. So, and like I said, there's been a bunch of other stuff. God, I won't get into I'm just giving you the main ones that have, uh, you know, contributed to, you know, me being a millionaire uh, right now. All right. And again, all of these, all I've had to do was be patient. Notice they didn't happen in weeks. They didn't happen in two weeks. They took months, which isn't a lot of time. Some of them took years. In the case of Chainlink and Ave, they took years. When you buy stuff in a bear market, what people call a bear market, it takes longer. It takes years, right? But again, being in a bear market, it allows you to accumulate. Remember what I said? Uh, I had made a big mistake with Bitcoin. I was making the biggest mistake in my life. The biggest mistake that I was making is when Bitcoin fell, I wasn't buying more. I bought at $1,000 and I just held it. But all back here, man, I could have been buying, buying every month. I could have been buying three or four Bitcoin easily every single month. And I didn't do that. And so I learned from that. So, you know, uh, even though Chainlink, Chainlink was uh, the only thing up until now when I'm getting ready to show you next that like never dipped. <laughs> Chainlink just pretty much went straight up. You see, like I said, I got it at 17 cents. It's not even on here. Look, it just pretty much for the most part, it just went straight up. Right. So I didn't have a lot of dip opportunities here, but I was still accumulating uh, more. OK, so um, it's experience. You know, you get in stuff, you learn things if you pay attention. Right. If you're diligent, if you're patient, it's like, OK, I've seen this before. You know, I'm going to, you know, get out of here. Right. And so sometimes that experience, uh, sometimes that patience can hurt you. You know, I would say somewhat even though i mean i made so much money on this i still can't say it but you know yeah i did i get hurt somewhat by holding on to this a, a little bit did i still make a bunch of money yes so um and 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 then pancake made me more money i won't get into it because it gave me other stuff so that's the real reason why i was holding this because it was giving me other things right so so here's the question. What am I in now and, and why am I in it? First of all, we are in a bear market. Okay. We're in a bear market. All right. So what do you want to look for? Again, with everything else, I'm looking for something 
that most people don't know about yet is not hyped up and they're introducing something new to crypto okay so here we go this is hundred what has hundred introduced to crypto they have introduced basically a certificate of deposit it's the first one what is a certificate of deposit a certificate of deposit is you put some money in and you can't touch it for a certain amount of time okay and generally speaking with a cd it's a year so you cannot move it right i think some of them you get penalized like you know a bunch of money if you just gotta move it but you're basically putting something in there to be safe right and 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 that's something that's sorely needed in crypto so what these guys did is when you buy this, you got to hold it for 100 hours. Now, that don't seem like a lot. <laughs> that seems like, what, 100 hours, that's it? But it's so many people in crypto that are trading back and forth, like, all the time, like, you know, hourly, daily. They can't even hold. Is this the real one? They can't even hold for a hundred hours, much less years like I just showed you, right? Now I'm gonna pick, I don't know any of these people. I'm gonna pick a random person. Let me pick this first person. Look at this. Oh my goodness. First of all, this looks like fake volume to me. But the bottom line is it's to look at this. This is how much this individual. You, do you see what I did? All I did was pick a random, the first thing I saw. The very first thing I saw. Here's another one that has traded twice in two minutes. Right? So just a random and look. Look how much this person has traded back and forth. Right? And it, this is what crypto has become people are just you know just trading 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 not getting any value not understanding anything just getting in selling 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 dude bought on july 29th and his first sale was august 5th and then another buy 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 and then you know maybe went up a bunch so he said so bought again like this is this is crazy but this is crypto and this is what people come in to crypto and do and they'll come in and complain and say oh why is crypto going down why is pepe going down why is this going down so on and so it's because of idiots like this right that think they know how to day trade they don't but that doesn't stop them from trying. And because of the crypto rules, they can do that. Okay. So 100 recognizes this and say, you know what? We just want y'all to not be able to do anything for 100 hours. Let's see what happens. So not only when you buy, you can't sell for 100 hours. After you sell, you cannot get back in for another hundred hours. That's huge. Because everybody wants to sell and then see what happened and get back in. Oh, I was I was wrong. Let me uh you know try to get back in. You can't. So what it does is it teaches you to hold. And so what has happened? This is what has happened. Okay. This is twelve thousand percent since June. Okay, remember what I said, Chainlink was the first one that just went up. And there's been some dips, but those dips always get bought, right? This is something new. This is huge. If, if all of crypto introduced this, do you understand that this would completely revolutionize all of crypto? 
if they all just made you hold for a certain period of time? Do you understand what would happen to Bitcoin if everybody that bought Bitcoin had to hold it for at least 100 hours? And where does this come from, guys? Where does this come from? This comes from traditional finance. The only reason your stocks keep doing what they're doing is because you can't sell them. You don't even control them. And it's like that for years. You don't have access to your retirement because if you did, most people would blow it. If you had unfettered access to your 401k where people would always find a reason to take money out, can you imagine what would have happened during the pandemic? Can you imagine what would have happened during the pandemic if everybody had access to their retirement accounts? The retirement accounts all across the world would have been drained in like a week. Then you add to the fact the fear that is generated by the media because they'll scare you about Bitcoin or whatever. And you're like, oh, I need to get out. Oh, it's about to go down. Let me get out. And then that creates a cascading effect where people just want to get out. If we all just decided to hold like, you know, I'm not selling. The reason why things go up is because people just decide not to sell. It's that simple, right? And the amount that I'm using is so little compared to what I got. You feel what I'm saying? It's like, okay, yeah, we can take care of this, this and that, so on and so forth, da, 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 da. So I just put whatever I make. This is my bank account. I put whatever I make into Bitcoin, right? And just piece off of that, live off of that. And, you know, you'll be surprised. Bitcoin keeps going up. I'll look at my account and be like, damn, I swear I've spent <laughs> such and such last month. And you don't even see it because Bitcoin has made up for like everything that you spent that month. Like it's crazy. And this is with people selling back and forth like crazy. Right. What if people were allowed, like, let's check out this guy guy or go okay this is just selling i gotta i gotta oh no no he he bought bought a bunch and look at this man i don't know what he or she is doing but i mean but i get that i see they're trading but so just imagine we can go like what's to this is all today what man it's early just imagine him buying him or her buying here and he's got a hold and everybody else has to hold as well. Okay. Um, like that's what 100 has introduced. So if the whole crypto market picks on. The, but how many are doing this right now? Just 100. You know why? Because they don't want to do it. Because <laughs> they want to sell. Why? Why is the volume? So low on 100 people at, because people want to sell. They want to jump in and out. They don't want to be still. So right now, I haven't checked recently, but right now, I think it's less than like seven or eight hundred people. <laughs> in hundred. This is what you this is the type of valuations that I do. Right. There's less than seven or eight hundred people. In this, and the current market cap is five million, right? Look at Sheba. Sheba has a, a fantastic community. They are awesome. They are really what I think crypto is all about. Honestly, I'm, I'm I'm keeping it real because when you have a community, you can just build up anything. But the reality is, Sheba has no value. Outside of just community, it doesn't, it didn't introduce anything. They just put a dog on, on a coin and Elon tweeted about it and it blew up. That's what happened. They didn't introduce anything new. They just now starting to launch something. And, and this is at a 4 billion valuation. 
So you're telling me that something that has introduced something can't be top to, are you serious? It's just people need to discover it, which again, it, which is why I'm talking about it. And that's the same reason that I talked about Bitcoin. You go back and look, I'm, just, I'm consistent, y'all. When I want to share stuff with folk, you don't have to pay me and all that. I've never gotten paid to promote anything. Nothing. I don't understand these leeches in crypto where you got to pay them something to talk about something. We are trying to get on. We are trying to make it. How can you look somebody in the face and say, you know, hey, you know, I would tell you about this, but, you know, um, you, you got to pay me first. Right. And I do have a course and, you know, the course just goes into more detail than I could ever put into a YouTube video. And I can't spend time with everybody one on one. So I set aside a course for people who want to have a more direct contact with me and learn more and so on. and So but I have always given people free game, always. Starting with Bitcoin. And that's what I've been doing lately. Last couple of weeks with 100. And I'm just explaining to you why. So, again, I just took you through how I went from nothing to becoming a millionaire. How, what I look at, how I look at it, how long I hold. Like, the average hold has been, like, two years. So, when you go into something in crypto, your mindset should be, holding for at least two years and you should only get in stuff that's different from everybody else don't just get in crap just to get in crap that's how i've done it I, and that's the only way i can teach it